What's up, TBS crew? It's your boy Steph back with another reaction. This time we have Unit 522. Three creepy stories submitted by subscribers based on true events. Number six, uploaded July 17th, 2019. Now, down in the description will be links to Unit 522's channel, this original video, and all of my social medias. Get at your boy and see the personal life that I don't upload to YouTube. Without further ado, let's get into it. This story happened many years ago, when I was 16. My parents had gone out for the night, leaving me home alone. I began my evening by watching television. After a while, I heard something at my front door. It wasn't a knock. It was more like someone had tripped on the front step and fell into the door. I muted the TV and slowly made my way to the front door to check things out. No I peered out and saw nothing but an empty porch. We live near a forest, wow. so I figured it was a raccoon or maybe a feral cat messing around outside. I went back to the couch and continued to watch my show, but I turned the volume down in case whatever it was came back. I had completely forgotten about the incident when a flash of light quickly lit up outside through one of the downstairs windows. Again, I got up to check it out, turning on one of the exterior lights, but I saw nothing. About half an hour had passed with no more strange activity, and my parents eventually came home. I told them what happened shortly after they came inside. My father armed himself with one of his handguns and grabbed a flashlight. Got the they heat. went outside to check around the house, but there was no sign of anyone there. Two days later, I was in my bedroom on my computer. There's a window that is directly beside my bed. Perhaps I was careless that day because I had left the blinds open and anyone from outside could easily see into my room. Are you kidding me? Suddenly a flash of light came through the window directly into my eyes. I shouted for my parents as I shielded my eyes from the light and they immediately came rushing in. I told them what happened and my father checked outside once again. But like before, he didn't find anyone. At this point I was terrified and I couldn't stand to be alone in my room anymore. I slept in my parents' room over the next four days, but I finally went back into my room. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat, but I knew that I needed to give my parents some privacy. I was changing in my room after a shower when I heard a faint rustling sound from outside. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a dark figure crouching just outside my bedroom window. This time, I didn't panic. I acted like I didn't see the intruder and continued to dress myself. I then left my room calmly, then told my dad what I saw. He went outside with his rifle, and shortly after, my mother and I heard my dad shouting at someone not to move. My mom then immediately called the police. There you go. The police arrested a disheveled looking man who was wearing nothing but his underwear. Oh. Apparently the man was under the influence of heavy drugs. The police found a mountain of empty beer bottles some lotion, a camera, and a machete in some nearby bushes. Further investigation revealed that the camera had pictures of many underage girls wow. in various stages of undress, including myself. He was arrested for trespassing and a multitude of other charges that I can't remember. Child porn. This was a very bad man. It turns out he was the prime suspect in the disappearance of a young girl in the next county over. He had previously been arrested for domestic abuse and dealing drugs and had also been convicted of a rape charge some years back. From what I've heard, the body of the missing girl who was around my age was found in his garage. Every day I wonder what could have happened to me if I hadn't kept to my cool when I saw him at my window, if I had freaked out and gave him a chance to retreat to his hiding spot. Perhaps he would have came back another time and broke in. Maybe he would have moved on and targeted another girl. I'm just glad he's behind bars now, where he belongs. I was 26 when this happened. I was working at a small town grocery store as the early morning baker with a shift starting at 5 a.m. Is that for a There wasn't an overnight crew at the store, so I was one of the only ones who was there that early in the morning, except for the store owner who started at the same time as me. 
On this particular day, I didn't have the key to the store because I shared it with the other baker, who covered for me on my days off. I wasn't able to get the key before my shift started, as I had off the previous day. It wasn't a big deal, though, as I would be able to get into the store when the owner arrived. I've always been a very punctual person, and would always arrive 10 to 15 minutes before my starting time. I lived 15 minutes away in another town, but I like to give myself a good 30 minutes to get there to account for any possible car troubles or road closures, and maybe right. I'll stop off and get coffee, etc. Right. If I didn't have my key, I would sit outside the front of the store and wait for the owner to arrive to let me in. On this morning, I arrived 15 minutes early, parked, grabbed my belongings, and started making my way towards the store. The owner never arrived early. He was always there at 5 a.m. sharp, so I expected to wait the full 15 minutes. I always brought a book to pass the time. I couldn't browse through social media on my phone, since there was very poor reception in the small town in the middle of nowhere. I always parked in the back far left corner of the parking lot, so it was a bit of a ways to get to the building. I was about halfway through the parking lot, and that's when I stopped and looked behind me to the main road. Where I saw a very large truck coming down it. The truck suddenly stopped dead in the middle of the road. There was no stop signs or traffic lights, so there was no justifiable reason that this truck would stop, especially at 4.45 in the morning. I was caught off guard by the situation, and I was just standing there, looking at the truck. I was visible in the dark, because I was illuminated by the light of a nearby lamppost. The truck flew into motion, and made a sharp turn into the parking lot towards me. And that's when I started sprinting towards the store. I should pause here and give a little context about the structure of the store. It was a multi-business plaza, with the grocery store being on the far right, and some other businesses to the left. There's a little walkway between them that leads behind the building, where there is an additional parking lot, a few dumpsters, and a tree line of a nearby forest beyond that. Mm -hmm. I remembered that I didn't have the key to enter the store. The truck was about halfway through the parking lot, gunning right towards me. When I finally reached the front of the store, I kept running past the door and down the walkway that led between the buildings. As I entered the walkway, I looked back to see the truck turning around and driving around the store, making its way to the back of the building. When it was driving around the store, the truck wasn't visible and I quickly ducked down behind some bushes that were planted right up against a pillar. Shortly after, I heard the truck pull up behind the store and idle there for a few minutes. I stayed hidden, looking for something that I could use to defend myself just in case. I settled for holding my car keys between my fingers to use as a makeshift weapon. My mind was racing, trying to wrap my head around what was happening, trying to devise a plan to get out of the situation. How? I heard a door slam. Whoever was in the truck had gotten out. I didn't want to peek out from my hiding spot, possibly giving away my position. Luckily, the bush was big enough that they wouldn't be able to spot me. I just had to be quiet. So I sat as still as I could. I heard footsteps walking towards me. I was hoping this person would assume that I went into one of the businesses and would just leave. I held my breath. I was sure that at any second they would find me and do God knows what to me. This is the point where I thought about my phone. I knew I didn't have a good cell phone reception in this town, and I didn't think it was worth making noise to search through my bag for it anyways. No. My hands were gripping my car keys. My knuckles were turning white. My body was trembling. My legs were aching underneath me. But I didn't want to readjust to make the bushes rustle. Whoever this was, was now walking between the buildings. They passed by the bushes I was hiding in and headed to the front. They stood there silently, looking for me. They didn't say a word. There was nothing but the sounds of their footsteps. They walked past my hiding spot again, and back towards their truck. To my relief, I heard the slamming of their truck door as they climbed back in. I then heard the rumble of the engine as it accelerated slowly back around to the front parking lot. I could hear the loud engine of the truck idling in front of the store over the next few minutes before peeling out of the parking lot and down the road. After the truck's engine was no longer audible, I abandoned my hiding spot and ran towards my car, got in and locked the doors. I turned on my car, just in case the truck came back. 
I sat there and listened, waiting for the rumbling of the truck's engine to come back. Why didn't you do that in the first but place? thankfully, it never did. Why didn't you hop back in your car in the first place? Wow. This happened to me in the summer of 2008. At the time, I was 18 and staying with my mother until college started again. Jesus she Christ. She moved dude. to this area after I started college the year before. So I didn't know the area that well. This is so crazy. This is important for the story. My mother often traveled for work, so most days I was on my own. Every week I would stop for a slice of pizza at the shop that was near the house. After a few weeks, an employee of the pizza shop struck up a conversation, asking questions like, do I live close, how old was I, what school I went to, etc. And ultimately asked me out to go dancing. I don't remember exactly how old he was, but he was definitely older than 21, but younger than 40. 21? Despite only having formally met this guy that day, I stupidly accepted because I was bored. I had been fairly sheltered my whole life. I was extremely shy and had never been asked out in such a way. I honestly thought that I was rebelling in some way by agreeing to go out with him. No. I gushed about it to my best friend, who lived in the next county over. She was excited for me. I had already planned to visit her the following day and promised her all the juicy details. I agreed to meet the guy that night outside of the pizza shop. He offered to pick me up from my house, no. but I said no simply because I didn't want to have to explain to my mother who he was if he ever decided to show up unannounced. Right. At the time, I felt that she asked too many questions, but in reality, she didn't ask enough. Right. And should have just met him at whatever club we were supposed to go to which he never named. But again, I was a dumb 18-year-old. And I thought this guy was such a gentleman for insisting that he drives me. The second I met up with him, things started going south. I parked my car and got out to greet him. To my surprise, he was still in his work clothes. He claimed that he was just getting off work, which he didn't mention would be the case earlier when we set the time. I thought it was weird. But I still got in his car. He told me, after I was already in his car and we were up the road, that he needed to go home first and clean up. I was immediately on edge, but I didn't want to anger him or ruin the night before it started. What? So I reluctantly said okay. You bullshit. We got to his apartment, and I hesitated to enter, but he ever so gently put his hand on my bag and steered me inside. What? He turned on the TV for me and told me to get comfortable. Okay, you know what? At this point, I really hate to say it. There is, God damn, there is almost 10 minutes of this story left. It's at 12 minutes and 15 seconds now, and the video is 22 minutes and 3 seconds long. So, about almost 10, 9 and a half minutes of this story left. You have been playing around with your life from the moment you agreed to go out on the date with this dude who came out of the blue. And then you don't tell your parents because you think your mom is too worried when in situations like this, she should be worried. Um, you come to find out she didn't ask enough questions. Okay. Well, that, okay. So we're going to move on from that. Now you're in his house and you're getting a weird feeling, but you don't want to ruin the night or make him mad. Fuck making him mad. Your safety is more important than anything. I just, I just, I don't see this ending well. I see this ending with an attempted rape or an actual rape. I hate to say that, but going the way she's going, that's what I'm seeing. I don't know about y'all, but that's what I'm seeing is going to happen because this story has a, a while to go. So a lot is going to transpire within this duration. I just, oh man. Okay. Let's just, let's get back into it. I said I was fine and shuffled my feet a bit, clutching my purse and looking around the room, mentally recounting the path to the exit. I was relieved when he went into his room and closed the door. I then heard the sounds of running water. I relaxed a little and sat on the couch to watch TV. Not long after that, he came out of his room. My mind has blocked the details of this part. He was either completely naked or had a towel loosely covering his privates, but he was definitely not clothed. I thought about running, but I didn't know where I was, and this was before Uber. He tried talking to me about something mundane, 
as if he wasn't standing nude in front of a girl he had just met that day. I answered, but kept my eyes firmly on the TV. He finally gave up and went back into his room and got dressed. He came back out and said that he was ready to go. I was super glad to get out of there. I thought we were going dancing, and a lively atmosphere with more people around would have made me feel better. But when we got back to his car, he drove a ways until we came to a shopping plaza with stores and restaurants. In my head I thought, there's no way that there's a dance club here. And there wasn't. When I said to him, I thought we were going dancing, he said, we are, but we should eat first, don't you think? What? No. So again, while internally screaming to get out of there, I agreed to go eat with him. That's bad Because now I was even further from home, and he was my ride back to my car. So in my mind, it would be best not to anger or insult him in any way. You should have drove yourself. I also yourself. reasoned to myself that I would be okay in a restaurant anyway, because there would be witnesses there if he tried anything. I shudder, thinking about how naive I was back then. We get seated and order food. He then starts telling me about how I should try out the margaritas at this place. No. I remind him that I'm only 18, but he says that it's no big deal. He calls over the waiter before I could argue further and orders a margarita for me. Just one for me and nothing for himself. No. The waiter asked me my age, and I thought that this was my way out. I quickly and loudly say that I'm 18, but the waiter frowns looks at the guy who made a gesture that I didn't fully catch, and then the waiter turns back to me and says, you're not old enough, and we're really not supposed to, but I'll make an exception this time. He... I was shocked. After the waiter walked off, the guy I was with chastised me in a whisper, saying that I should have lied about my age. I asked him if he was serious, half annoyed, half exasperated. He nobody. And said that I barely passed for 18, and that no one would believe that I was any older than that. He shrugged, and I nibbled my food, bitterly cursing myself for getting into this mess and praying that I would make it home alive. The waiter, nobody. The margarita came out, and it was massive. I tried to get away with not drinking any, but the guy noticed and pushed it closer to me. I was desperate to keep my wits about me, but I didn't know how he would react if I flatly refused to drink it. Who cares? So I took a few sips. Whoever made the drink was heavy-handed, to say the least. I was a complete lightweight, and was only about 110 pounds on top of that. Soaking wet. So those few sips I took got me very buzzed. I had been at college for a year by this time, and learned some basics about drinking. Yeah, yeah, most of us drank underage. Sue me. I tried to shovel more food in to soak up some of the alcohol, but as small as I was, I was already getting full, and didn't manage to get enough in to sober up. Thinking back... The guy watched me like a hawk. Every sip. Every bite. I kept my head down and could barely look at him in the eye. My vision was slightly blurry now. Oh my god. And I'm sure my eyes drooped a little too. I remember telling him that I no longer wanted to go dancing and just wanted to go home. Before I knew it, he settled the check and we were out the door and back in his car. He asked me if I was drunk with a chuckle and I told him, No. Not even close. Trying my best not to slur my words. But I have no idea what I looked like. I must have looked like prey. Because it was at this point that he made his move. He started saying how beautiful I looked. And how good I smelled. He put his hand on my thigh and rubbed it. I tried moving away from his hands. But his car was small. And he could reach me easily. I had a lot of thoughts in that car in those short moments. I thought about tucking and rolling out. I remembered that there was a knife in my car and wished that I had thought to put it in my purse. I thought about dialing 911 and it was that thought that snapped me out of my stupor. It was like all this time I had forgotten that I had a phone. I started looking for street signs and buildings that I might be able to relay to a dispatcher. It didn't take long before I realized that he was driving in circles. This made me angry. I thought he was taking me back to my car all this time. The word kidnapped flashed in my head, and my fight or flight took over. I abandoned all politeness and asked him why we were going in circles. He ignored my question and said that I should hang out with him at his place to sober up. No, no. He started driving faster, and I told him that I didn't want to go back to his place. 
I wanted to go home and to sleep. He tried to convince me that I could do that at his place. No. That we could cuddle up and watch a movie. See. The car stopped, and to my horror, we were outside of his apartment. Oh. I turned to him and sternly said to his face, You're going to take me back to my car right now, where I'm calling the police, and keep your hands to yourself. I have a knife in my bag if you try anything else. No, why? I was shaking all over, fighting back tears. Why are you telling him this? clearly bluffing about the knife. He didn't speak or move, possibly deciding if he wanted to call my bluff or just get rid of me. He donned a noticeable scowl on his face. He seemed to decide on the latter option and started driving again. I kept my eyes on every street sign until I recognized where we were. The car barely came to a stop when we finally got to the pizza shop before I jumped out and ran to my car. But stupid me didn't have my keys out and ready. I fumbled them, dropped them, bent to pick them up, and opened my door. Before I could close it, he was there holding it open and refusing to let go. He was far stronger than me. He said that I couldn't leave without giving him a kiss goodbye. I briefly considered running him over, but decided against it. I gave the quickest peck on the cheek, pushed him back, and slammed and locked my door. He actually tried to reopen it. I turned on the car, but hesitated. I was still buzzed, and I knew that I shouldn't drive. But if I waited, this guy would follow me home. I was only four blocks away, and it was past 11 a.m., so I took the chance and gunned it out of there. He wasn't back in his car yet, so I had a head start. I checked my rearview mirror the whole way, and drove around the block by the house, and parked in an alley to make sure that I wasn't followed. I pretty much spent the rest of that night crying. He had my number and tried calling and texting me several times, but I didn't answer. The next day I went to my friend's house and told her everything. I was distraught and scared. The calls from him continued. This was pre-smartphone days and I had no idea how to block his number. Eventually my friend's older sister grabbed my phone, mustered up her most ghetto voice possible and yelled into the phone about what was going to happen to him if he didn't stop calling. The call stopped immediately after that. I never told my mother about what happened, and I never went to the police, but I also never saw that guy again. I only ever went back to that pizza place once after that, and my friend was with me. I don't remember whose idea it was to go. Maybe I wanted to show her who the guy was, or maybe we just wanted a cheap pizza. Fortunately, he wasn't in the front. We ordered the pizza, and I made the comment that he might spit in our food if he knew it was me. A rather shocked guy behind the counter asked why I would say that, and I gave him a brief rundown of what happened. He walked in the back and came back out a short while later saying that no one would spit in our food and assured me that that guy would never bother me ever again. Oh, something must have happened to him. Good. There's always a reason to be afraid. Fam, I'm telling y'all, that bartender, when he took her out, he had, they, they was connected somehow. They had to be. Because he still gave her a drink and it sounded like he spiked it. Or something. Even though she was underage, he bent the rules just for her. You know, just for a favor for him. They had to know each other. That was planned. That was premeditated. It sounds crazy, but I'm telling y'all. That bartender and old boy, they had to know each other. They had to. There's, there's no other possibilities. And like I thought, um, it didn't end in a rape or really an attempted rape. But it was leading to that point. Had she drunk enough, she would have passed out because she was a lightweight. And, you know, you know where it would have went from there. He would have took her back to his apartment and he would have had un unconsented sex with her. And this story would have really, really, really been depressing. Um, yeah, man, uh, I don't know. I'm glad it didn't end how I was... Um, thinking it was going to, it almost went there because he did put 
his hand on her thigh in the car and fellas come on now come on y'all y'all know it was good when we put that hand on that thigh like <laughs> we start etching up a little bit more are you getting nervous yet you getting nervous yet huh but um there was so many warning signs from the get-go that you shouldn't have even went out with him i can't i'm not even gonna prolong this video just to name all of the mistakes that you made, all the mistakes that you made that almost cost you your ass, literally, I'm not even going to try to prolong the video to give a description on because there were just so many. It was a fucking plethora. Like, god damn. Thank you so much, guys, for watching my video. If you enjoyed the reaction, leave a like, a comment, and share the video. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and tap that bell icon so you will get notified every time your boy stuff. Drop new content, which I do seven times a week. That is all I got for y'all this time around. Your boy Steph is out.